Hi again, everyone. This video is sponsored by contribution from Ginny, and here's her story. Dear Ollie, I just wanted to touch base and thank you from the bottom of my heart for the invaluable service you're offering on YouTube. I reached a point about four years ago when I felt totally unable to communicate with my father and stepmother anymore because they wanted to carry on as though everything in our family was normal, and I knew that I could no longer pretend that it was. Over the years, I have tried to raise issues from childhood to be told, I don't remember, I was ill at the time. Not so ill that she couldn't recall every single sin I'd ever committed at a moment's notice when it suited her, however. Which told me that it's not her remembering, it was not the truth. I, and I hate liars. After watching your videos, I now know that is a characteristic of the narcissistically abused child to be empathetic, to be an empathetic truth seeker. I find liars insulting. I came to a time when I knew that in order to move forward with any kind of relationship with them, I needed to acknowledge some of what had happened and this was never going to happen. So I fell into no contact without knowing that it was positively recommended. Of course, it made me feel guilty, particularly when I was getting the why aren't you talking to us emails and voicemails. The truth was the conversation about the past and validation I needed was so big I didn't know where to begin. And remembering and vocalizing or writing down those events made me feel physically ill. A few months later, my half-sister came to me saying, she thought she'd finally found what was wrong with my stepmother, her blood mother, and sent me some links to sites about narcissistic mothers. Going through the checklist of behaviors was a real eureka moment. She ticked every single box. For every behavior listed, I had at least five examples. The lid was finally off at that point, and I felt I could finally start to heal, having named the problem illness and knowing it wasn't me after all. Of course, that was only the beginning. I became aware that the relationship I was in with my partner was abusive in some similar ways, and I felt powerless to overcome the issues we had together or the part I had to play in those. I knew he developed a talent for pushing buttons. I didn't even know I had an event. He, oh, I, I knew he had developed a talent for pushing buttons I didn't even know I had, and eventually he ended our relationship, leaving me in a very difficult position and heartbroken. My stepmother chose this period to try to mend our relationship, sending me an email that on the face looked like an olive, olive branch, but in reality was yet another large olive-shaped olive stick to beat me with. Exactly. The narcissist will always come at you they will always come at you at your weak spot when they know you're weak is when they is when they try to re-engage the essence of this email was how ill she was when i was a child and how my extreme behavior was essentially the cause of all the problems on receiving that email i was overcome i was overcome with cold anger I hadn't experienced anger like that in my living memory, but it was a gift. And I really, I want, I want you to realize what your mother was doing here. Knowing you had just been, just been dumped and her heart broken and at a weak spot and vulnerable and probably taking on, a, in her mind, thinking you're taking on a lot of blame on yourself. Well, what better time does she have than to shift all her shitty, be all her blame, all the blame for her shitty behavior during your childhood onto you? You're already down, you're weak, you've just been broken up with. I'm sure you're unsure of yourself at that point, she's thinking. Here's the perfect opportunity for me now to project all my abuse and get all the blame off me and make you think like it's your fault. Because you're probably already thinking that this relationship is your fault. What an easy time to make you believe things, huh? Because suddenly all the words that had 
up until then evaded me were flowing in a torrent across the page. Four or more type pages and several hours later I was done and left it for a day or two, then added to it, then sent it, and felt such a burden lift from my shoulders. My father responded a week later, essentially calling me a liar and reiterating everything she'd said. But I knew that was going to be the response, if any, if any came at all. So although saddened to be proved right, I was okay with that. My ex and I continued to see each other occasionally, and each time I felt worse about myself and him. And then there came a day in August 2016 when, having come back from my ex-husband's funeral only 48 hours earlier, my ex-partner suggested meeting up and doing something fun that I liked. Another narcissist coming at you at your low point. They're all the same. They wait for your weakest point, your weakest moments, and then they strike. They try to get back in. That felt like a breath of fresh air. Doing things I liked together were rare during our relationship. Anything I'd suggested as fun or would be like to do, being pushed to the bottom of the pile in favor of things he wanted to do. So we met up and went out to the event staying only a half an hour as he said he was bored and since he was the driver I didn't have much choice and we went back to where he made me a cup of coffee and told me with cheerful glee how he was in a happy place having starting having started a new relationship in that moment I froze I felt pain in every part of my body in every part of my body and utterly unable to speak Tears were rolling unchecked down my face, and I was unable to stop. He was talking, and I couldn't make any sense of the words he was saying, although I do remember that he laughed, then apologized for laughing, saying, my laughing makes it appear that what I am saying is untrue, but it is true. The reason you stopped hearing what he was saying, because that was the moment you realized I got suckered again. Just like my stepmother, of course at this moment, he's going to come in and get a few kicks in. My response in that moment seemed even to me to be extreme, that something deeper and much further back was being triggered. And so I started researching in earnest and discovered you amongst others. And I learned that actually my recent ex was only one in a long line of narcissists who had come and gone in my life. It, had been, it has been incredibly helpful to hear other people's stories on your channel. Some I have identified with very strongly, yours included. Others not so much, but the fact is I am no longer alone. Sometimes you make me laugh with your dry wit, and I am blown away by how you're often able to predict what's coming next. Kind of like this. So thank you, Ollie. I thank, I I thank whatever force it is that led me to you and others, and others like you, and hope you are able to draw comfort in the knowledge of how many people you are helping. I may one day get around to writing my story for you to tell as you see fit, but we may, but we, but we may have to do it in other episodes because there's a lot, because there's a hell of a lot of it. I have donated under my official name as a small token of my appreciation. Blessings, Gina. UK. Well, I've said this before in other, in other videos, and I'll repeat it again. The narcissist will kick you when you're down. And it's funny, uh, G Jeannie, Ginny. It's funny how, not funny, haha, -ha, but it is to be a big red flag. How come you keep drawing in the type of people that will kick you when you're down, that will take, that's the type of narcissist you're, you're attracting that. They want to get you at your weakest point to either get something from you 
or hurt you deeper, which I think is what your ex was trying to do. A ha 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 in your face type of deal. Isn't it funny at your weakest moments, both your stepmother and your both your stepmother and your ex do the same type of manipulative thing. You kind of saw it from your stepmother, but then you had that aha moment with him, like, Jesus, he's doing the same thing she was trying to do. And I'm sure if you think back when you said you were triggered, you will see this probably has repeated itself over and over again throughout your life. So, but opening the box of nar to narcissism and finding it to begin with is what's led you down this path. So, here's the thing to keep in mind. When you're having a bad day and you're having a bad moment or something bad happens, wait for the narcissist to strike. And they are always going to try to strike at it with kindness at your low moment. So, red flag. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, or you'd like to set up a Skype chat or private phone call, you know what to do with the PayPal and my email links in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.